Hello everyone, this is Mason, and today I will be showing you guys how to build a craft store plastic model car kit into a fully functional proportional RC car. Alright, let's now talk about what are these kits. So these are just unassembled plastic model kit. They're just, you know, molded in like white or maybe gray color plastic. It's like a very old school hobby that you have to, you know, individually cut each pieces out, send them, and you have to paint them. You know, the result really varies from people to people. So I guess this is why not a lot of kids really, you know, build these things anymore. As you can see, it's just, you know, individually molded plastic trees with all the parts on it. And, you know, there's a body, there's everything. And honestly, this hobby is pretty much entirely about stress management and inhaling toxic chemicals. Now, let's take some of the uh, components out. Let's open the plastic wrapping and take them out of the package. Now, the very first thing that you want to do before you um, build your model kit is to thoroughly study your instruction menu. These are pretty general for like all model kits out there. You know, they have all the panels saying what tools you need, what parts you need, you know, is there any like special stuff you need to do? Now this model kit is pretty simple. So it's just, you know, pretty big components like the engine, the chassis, the drivetrain. And for this step, you want to see which parts can be put together first and uh, painted first before um, assembled because this will save you a lot of time and for this build we will be uh, removing these uh, scale model axles and drivetrain parts and replace them with the powered RC components. It's pretty simple but make sure you thoroughly study. Before we start this build, let me firstly walk you through with some hobby RC car basics. So this is a, a pretty standard hobby grade RC car. It's a Tamiya Blitzer Beetle. It's a model kit that you have to build, but it comes with you know artic articulated suspension. It's rear wheel drive. It has dog bone drive drive shaft and proportional steering. So um, it's very important that we. Uh, know how you know like a professional RC car works before we move on to this thing so the first thing you need to know is a steering servo so this is a standard steering servo that you know basically steers a car just yanks the linkage left and right and that's how the RC car is able to steer you know as you can see it's it's pretty simple not really too much stuff to go on and here we also have a battery pack. This is a seven cell nickel metal hydrate battery pack. It's pretty old school, pretty simple, but it's very safe. And basically this battery sends the power to this little red object. It's called a electronic speed controller or ESC. And the ESC basically takes the throttle signal from your uh, remote controller then send it to the electric motor in the back, which, you know, basically gives the car power and let it drive forward. Uh, here is a radio transmitter. So these transmitters are always sold separately for most of um, hobby grade RC cars. Some does come with it as like, a, you know, standard equipment, but it's pretty basic. So the trigger basically, when you pull it backward, it goes forward. When you push it, you know, forward, it actually stops the car and make it go backward and the knob steers it. Um, yeah, so basically the signal gets sent to this little thing called a receiver. And the receiver just, you know, takes your throttle and steering signal and send it to the ESC as well as the steering servo to make the car go forward or steer left or right. It's pretty simple, but it does take some efforts for, you know, someone who's new to the hobby to figure everything out. All right, let's now lay out all the RC components that we will need. We will need a micro RC servo. We will need a little reduction gear motor, some metal drive shafts and a toy axle. All right, let's now talk about these two. So these are a metal drive shaft. 
headset and a plastic drive axle. They are from a company called WPL and they are for like a really small 1 to 16 scale RC car, little truck. So um, you can purchase these separately from like Amazon or eBay. And basically the drive shaft helps you to deliver power from the little reduction gear motor to the drive shaft because these are really cheap. They're like $9 per piece probably and you know like I've been using them for like a variety of like little powered animatronics and stuff so this axle it's just you know like a pretty standard uh, scale um, solid axle set you have power coming in from you know the center and it basically goes through a 90 degree cut gear then delivers to the, uh, the straight axle and that powers you know, the vehicle and the wheel attached to it. We will have to modify it a little bit later on in order to fit this particular car. All right, let's start with the model building part. Uh, let's first go through some model building basics. So you will need a sprue cutter. They are kind of, you know, like a little plier cutter, but has like a smaller tip. And you want to cut uh, all the plastic pieces out of the plastic tree. And you want to leave, you know, like a one millimeter, um, stud like a little bit when you cut it instead of cut it like right next to the part because you will um, actually damage the part in that way so just cut it out uh, cut it out first leave a little bit on it and later we are gonna trim the little you know the little bit piece off with like a knife All right, so now we've got all the body panel pieces cut out. We will prepare them for painting for later. For now, what we need is a really sharp knife. I have this Excel brand knife. You can use other knife as well, as long as sharp and you are comfortable with using it, it should work perfect. After that, we will also need some 600 grit uh, wet or dry sandpaper. I personally prefer the 3M one because it's very common, you can get it everywhere. And it also works really well, you know, when you dip them with, uh, in water. Uh, and I'll be also using this uh, sanding sponge. It's really good for like curved surfaces because it would just, you know, go f uh, with the surface with a curve. It will not like, you know, sharpen the corners. And yeah, so for now, let's uh, use the knife to trim off, you know, all these little stud bit, you know, left from the previous step. Let's now trim off these little studs with a really sharp hobby knife. You want to cut it as close to the part as possible, but you don't want to get too close where it would harm the parts. This is also a really good opportunity to trim off any flushings of the parts. Again, just be careful, take it slow, only trim off a little bit at a time until you have it perfect. After trimming, we can grab a piece of 800 grit sandpaper and let's just give the edges a thorough sanding. We want to make sure there are no sharp edges or anything sharp that pokes out. And we want to make sure that everything is fine and smooth. For these bigger molding lines, we want to uh, trim them f as flat as possible and then we will have to fill them with putty. Um, this is caused by the two pieces of the molds, um, you know, uh, closing together when the hot plastic gets injected in. So there's pretty much no way to prevent it. Um, just grab like a really sharp knife and, you know, give it a, a little scrape. And after that, we can sand it smooth. This is where a sanding sponge becomes very useful because it will go uh, with the contour of the body and it will not sand it too sharp. And for here, where we have these uh, indentations, this is because when the, um, the plastic shrinks after it cools down in the mold, it would you know uh, shrink in certain area where it's too thick. So in order to fix these, we need to give it a thorough sanding and then we are gonna fill it with putty. For the putty, I will be using the Tester's Contour Putty. You can get these in most of cr uh, crafting stores. They are like one to two dollars. Just squish out a little bit and, you know, like scrape it on with like a razor blade, make sure it's flat. Uh, then just, you know, let it dry and we can uh, further sand it after. Uh, 
All right, the party has dried. So for now, we can again grab the sandpaper, and we can dip it with a little bit water, and we can sand it smooth. Uh, you want to make sure that this will be kind of like the final sanding of the area. So you want to make sure um, you remove all the unf uh, you know the unflat uh, dried putty, and you want to get it as smooth as you can. Uh, to glue these body pieces together, we will be using the Tamiya Plastic Model Cement. Just brush on a little bit with the provided uh, brush cap, and uh, we can squish them on pretty nicely. Uh, you may you. Well, you may need to use a little bit of mask masking tape to hold certain parts uh, in place. Otherwise, they might shift during the uh, drying process. But yeah, that's pretty simple. All right, so after you've cut off, sanded, and trimmed all the border panels that will be painted later on, what you want to do now is you want to test fit all the panels to see how they fit. Like, will there be, you know, like bigger gaps between doors or maybe the bumper to the body or maybe the hood? And right now, it's like the good opportunity for you to、um, get them fixed or get these、uh, problems addressed. You know, if you don't fix them later on, once it's painted, there's kind of like no going back. So, if you want to do any changes, you want to do it right now. And for now, I won't be cutting off the door mirrors; they will be、uh, painted on the tree. Uh, it's the same thing for all the interior and the bigger engine pieces. I've cut them all out. I'm currently test fitting them to see, you know, would these little seats fit.、Uh, you know, would the chassis actually goes nicely with the interior? You know, and how the door panels will go together. You want to just keep them nice and clean for now, and we will paint them later on. Let's now move on to all the RC hardwares and electronics. As you can see, I've laid them all out. I will be installing the micro servo right in front of the engine, and I will replace the plastic model drive shaft with a micro reduction gear motor. The motor is connected to the small drive shaft, and the drive shaft will send power to this、uh, straight axle in order to power the car. Now, to send power to the little electric motor, we will need a small electric speed controller.、Uh, these are the same thing that you can find on Amazon. They are really, really cheap. It's like sixteen dollars. And if you type in "small、um, electro electronic speed controller," they should come out. So you have the power plug, the motor plug, the receiver plug, and the switch. So one of these little red plugs will power the motor, and the other one will take power from the battery. To make sure they work, we need these uh, separate uh, plugs in order to solder them onto the battery terminal. They are called JST2 plugs, short for Japanese. Uh, solderless terminals—they're really helpful. If you do a lot of,、uh, you know, electronics, you will need a lot of them. These red ones are called JST1 connectors. We don't need that, even though they're useful for、uh, some other applications. But for now, let's just put these aside. We will power it with a 9 volt Duracell battery. These are very common, and also because they are very small, they work really well. And to connect power to it, we will be using a 9 volt battery connector. Uh, to solder them together, we will be using a solder gun. We can use a soldering iron as well, and I have solder here. So it's pretty simple. It's straightforward, and you know, just to make sure everything goes together very well, I have these、uh, heat shrink tubings so that they would insulate. And to finish it,、uh, I prepared some、uh, small ball bearings. These would go into the、uh, the front steering knuckle, and to have functional suspensions, I've also prepared these、uh, micro springs. You can find them on Amazon, pretty cheap. Just type, you know, search like small springs. They should show up. Usually, they go into you know like a ballpoint pen to make sure like the the you know that mechanism would work. And、uh, to make the control arms, I've prepared these piano wires. You can get these in,、uh, you know, like、um, craft stores. They are very, you know, like springy. They're like soft. I have like different thicknesses as well, so you can pick different rates. Okay, so here are the remote control gears. So I have this、uh, Flysky FS GT three C radio controller and its receiver. Uh, you can get a set of、um, 
like Amazon or eBay pretty cheap. It's like $60, which I know it sounds like a lot, but hear me out. Uh, this controller can be paired with 10 different vehicles. So as long as you have 10 receivers, you can control all 10 vehicles with just one controller. So to me, this is a major plus compared to, you know, just buying individual controllers for all of the individual vehicles. So to me, I like, I like this. It has a really nice, you know, like a digital screen, has an antenna, has everything that I feel like is really handy, you know, to do all the crazy science-y DIY projects. I just love it. You know, if you love all the radio control stuff, you should totally get one of these. Now, in order for uh, this uh, straight axle to fit onto the car, we will have to trim it. As you can see, it's a, uh, a lot bigger than the plastic model uh, axle, and we will need to narrow it down so that it would fit. And after that, we will have to make a custom attachment so that the, uh, the powered axle would actually attach to these wheels. As you can see, the original model is just like a simple glue-on construction. Well, for the powered axle, they actually have a screw hole on it so you can screw um, a screw through and connect the wheel with the axle together. As you can see, the, uh, the, the width difference is actually pretty big. So in order to do so, we will need to take this axle apart. We will have to cut both the housing and the actual uh, metal axle inside in order to shrink it down and make it fit. Uh, we will also have to trim the a white plastic nylon piece so that it would also be short enough and for it to fit you will just need to take the screws out and the axle would come apart it's super simple but you want to be gentle so that you won't uh, strip the little screws and you also want to keep all these screws in a safe area all right so here you can see the uh, the basic structure of this axle it's super simple there are no differentials as you can see, this is the uh, the metal axle itself. There's a copper hex gear on it, and in the uh, in the cup of the drive shaft, there's another gear which you know basically sends the power uh, through the gear onto the axle. They fit basically um, into this plastic axle housing, and this housing holds everything together. It's again, it's a very simple construction, but you want to make sure um, while we are cutting, we are not losing any pieces. And you also want to uh, regrease all the little gears once the process is done. All right, so to cut the, uh, the axle, we will need a hacksaw blade. You can get these blades from, you know, like Home Depot or Lowe's. And you also want a meter for it. This meter basically helps you to cut everything, you know, like straight in 90 degree angle. So now let's cut the plastic housing first. Just place it on the, the, uh, the meter and, you know, just use a blade. It's super simple. Just cut off about like one uh, centimeter width. And we will have to do, uh, do the same thing for uh, both top and bottom housing. So after we've cut them all down, we can glue them back together using super glue. This should hold it back on together pretty well, you know. Uh, and if in case if the super glue doesn't work, you can also use the uh, epoxy glue. Now, after we've already uh, trimmed down the axle housing, we can now cut the uh, metal axle itself so that they would fit into the, uh, the newly shortened um, axle housing. As you can see, the difference is actually pretty big. So we will have to uh, actually trim off quite a significant amount. Let's lay out uh, these two finished uh, axle housing so that we know just exactly how much we need to trim off the metal axle itself. So I have, you know, the original model axle here as the comparison. And as you can see, the axle is at least uh, two centimeters longer than the housing right now. 
So the best way to do it is to make sure that they uh, they fit into this new housing on one side. And let's grab a red paint marker so that we can make sure uh, we know where to mark and just how much we need to cut off. You want to be really precise so that we are making a very correct cut each time. Because if you cut certain things wrong, sometimes there will not be, you know, any redos. So just take your time, you know, use a Dremel or you can use the same blade again and just carefully, you know, cut it. I, I almost cut myself here. So, you know, don't, don't be me. Just be careful. All right, so the axle itself have been cut. I've put everything back together again. Right now, we can reinstall the uh, you know the the nylon connector piece on each side. Now let's make sure that everything actually rotates correctly, no grinding or anything you know any funny stuff. So right now, let's uh, figure out how to mount the wheel on it. So as you can see, the original model wheel has like an inner cup. And basically the original axle just glues onto it. And you know, when you put the back of the wheel on it, it would hold the, you know, the axle in place and the wheel would rotate. But you know, let's be honest, that's actually like a pretty bad um, structural design. So for here, we need to um, glue both pieces together. And let's just drill the, um, the inner hole of the inner cup, like make the bore a little bigger so that the nylon piece would fit in. Again, just be really careful with this process. I almost hurt myself again. You know, I'm just using a um, impact wrench. I know I probably really shouldn't. All right, so let's uh, put these two uh, wheel hub onto the axle. And I will be using a uh, vice clamp to actually clamp it back in together. Now, notice here that I might use a little too much force to the point that it actually, you know, crack the housing a little bit. It's okay. You're just making a toy. It's it's not really that big of a deal. But you know, as soon as you know they fit together, as long as that works, you've got it done. Let's just double check if there's any binding or grinding, you know, right now. The axle actually works pretty good. Um, let's test if they would fit on the uh, the wheel itself well. Ah, it seems to work pretty good. All right, so, you know, this is pretty much it. Let's now install these tiny metal drive shaft. They look really cute and they also fit pretty good. It's super easy to install. Just tighten the uh, the lock nut on it with a um, mini hex wrench. Usually they should come with one of these. And yeah, you got it. All right, so here is the finished uh, powered rear axle for this model car. As you can see, I've glued on those springs on it. Just using super glue, it actually fits pretty good. And I've also made the, uh, the linkage bar with the piano wire. They are bent with a uh, electrician's clamps and they're just glued on into the uh, the rear screw hole on the axle. As you can see, the spring is really bouncy, it's squishy, it provides the ne uh, needed suspension, and the linkage rod helps keeping it in place. There really isn't too much to do right now. As you can see, they fit directly onto the chassis. I have to drill two more holes so that the, uh, the linkage bar would fit in. But yeah, once you get to this this step, your rear axles is pretty much done and you can just, you know, connect the power and it would work pretty good. Now, before we glue everything together, let's just double check it again and see, you know, does it have any binding? You know, how does the suspension travel actually works? How far does it do? You know, like if this looks okay for you right now, then that's perfect. You can move on to the next step and you've successfully made a powered axle for this model car. Stay tuned for the next episode and I will walk you through with all the process for painting your model car.